Hello, welcome to the House of Sugar Creek. I am Taylor Bradford. I am the person behind this channel and I'm so excited because today is my warehouse sale and there's some good stuff. I'm sad to be letting go of some of these things, but it's time for them to get a new lease on life in their new forever home. So I hope that some really awesome humans come to scoop up some of this stuff. So let me show you what is up for grabs in this sale. So first up, I have this hanging macrame swing that is so incredibly fun. Plus I have a hanging macrame floating side table or table and this beautiful sofa is available for sale. It is the first sofa that I ever purchased for Sugar Creek, and I'm sad to see it go, but it is not a renter, and because of its age, the sofa was made around 1880. It's just too delicate to ride in a bunch of trailers for future events, so it's time to let this one go, it definitely needs upholstery. The upholstery is disintegrating, but it is still a really beautiful piece. And again, it was the first sofa I ever bought. Then I have two dining chairs that are actually mates, but I only was ever able to re-upholster this front guy into a navy and the sun is kind of washing it out, but it is a beautiful, bold navy. And there is its matching chair, random doily, just hanging out. Let me actually fix that so it doesn't look like I'm hiding the back of that. Let's just let that hang down there. I've got two East Lakes dining chairs and a dusty blue that on a whim I purchased and then never did anything with them. I have some gun metal gray Toilex chairs. I'm selling my two fairy chairs, my white wicker fairy chairs, and I'm also selling Wilma. She is a type of peacock chair, but she is not like my peacock chairs up there. So she is going to go because I don't have a, a mate for her. And so it's hard to get them to rent just singly. Two ghost chairs. I have a mid-century chair that needs upholstery another vintage doily, all of this amazing stuff on the shelves, a mini peacock chair, a sewing machine cabinet drawer, some vases, some plant stands, some African baskets, some coffee crafts, a whole lot of fun, some Floral frogs, vintage floral frogs, some brass, there are some napkin rings, some palm fans, a brooch bouquet, this beautiful crushed velvet coverlet, king size, some more plant holders, a monkey dish, some chargers and some more brass plant holders, plus some macrame here, plant hangers. Those are fun. A vintage wooden ladder with a doily on it. Doily is sold separately. A cane back barrel chair, some wicker. Vintage doors, vintage shutters. The bamboo screen is not for sale. A brass coal box, some planters, some dishes, a lot of glassware. I think these are my most favorite iridescent coops. Somebody's gonna get these guys, I just know, gonna go to a good home. Plus all of this vintage glassware here. and some large brass candle holders. So that is the sale. That is what is up for grabs 
in this particular sale. And I have Kirsten McCurdy coming in to do a pop-up floral shop, which I'm excited for her to do that. And I'm offering free mimosas for my shoppers. So it's gonna be a good time. I hope that I have some shoppers. That always makes me nervous when I set up for a warehouse sale, whether or not people are gonna show up. So hopefully they do, because I need some of this to go so that I can make room for my exercise equipment that is starting to roll in. Let me show you. Down there on the floor. So I'm ready to make some changes in my own life and I need some of this vintage to go. Make room for some more vintage because you know, we have a tailored collection over here. So I would love for these things to go to a new home. So let's see what happens. So before I get started into how the sale has been going, I have to shout out this Better Homes and Gardens Soft Cashmere Amber Candle. It smells so dang good. So dang good. All right, onwards we go. So Friday's sale was slow. I did sell some things, but it was slow. And today, Saturday, when I'm filming this, has been busier, which has been nice, but you can see how much stuff is left, which is crazy, and I've done well. So I'm pumped about doing well, but look at how much cool stuff is still left. So I extended the sale to Sunday and still have some things on the racks here. Some stuff is definitely missing, but still have some things and still have some chairs added in a couple newbies. And yeah, one thing that did happen today, which is a, like, I don't, I don't have the right words for. So my first customer of the day actually is potentially going to be a future wedding client, which I'm really excited about. And I hope that we get to work with her and her fiance. And while we were working through getting her checked out and getting her all, you know, wrapped up and put together and out the door, I had another set of humans in the warehouse browsing and they came in super fast and the way they were moving was making me a little anxious but I needed to focus on the person in front of me. And so I was, I was doing all the things I needed to do to get her wrapped up and checked out and et cetera. And we were talking about rentals and she was showing me inspiration photos and it was so bizarre. And then all of a sudden they're leaving, they're going. And when they left and they shut the door, I was like, well, that was odd. That was odd. They were moving through super fast and then all of a sudden bam they were gone and she was like yeah and i kept hearing tinking noises and i didn't know if they were breaking things or whatever and it did not phase me one minute that they may have broken things because i didn't hear anything break but i was also distracted trying to talk to her and talk to her about her wedding etc and later when my husband came up here he was like hey i happened to check the cameras while you were up here earlier because you didn't answer your phone and I saw this tall guy over at the rack behind me pick something up start moving things around and I think he broke something did you know he broke something and I was like no let me show you he absolutely did so I had this really cute vintage Pyrex by the way coffee pot and you fill a little tea light put the tea light in the bottom and it keeps your coffee warm and this is what he broke and which is why they took off really quickly so thanks a lot for not paying for something that you broke and I absolutely can run my tapes backwards and screen grab your photo and also go get your license plate and go find you and get you to pay 
for breaking a really cool vintage Pyrex hobby pot. Who does that? I even had it in my listing. If you break it, you pay for it. So that was sad. Y'all have to see this closer up. I'm really sad that this is, is broke because it is a really great find. So let me show it to you and then we can just be remorseful that it broke and is now going in the trash forever. It's not gonna ever find a forever home and that makes me sad. So here it is in all of its former glory before the jack wagon tipped it over and caused the delicate glass to break. And look, this was not like super expensive to buy, but look how pretty this thing was. And there is a Pyrex mark on it, which makes me even sadder. Whoops. Hello, camera. Let's, let's go back to finding, finding you. See, Pyrex made in the USA. I'm just really, really sad that he broke it and didn't tell me. And I didn't realize he broke it. But my client that I was talking to at the time, or potential client, she did hear something tink. Oh, just makes me sad. On another pretty note, look at these beautiful blooms. So Kristen McCurdy Studio, shout out to her. If you are in our market, she is an amazing florist for special events and also does wedding planning and design. She had a pop-up floral shop here and these are the flowers that she left me. And I just put them in a vintage crock and I just think they're so pretty. Peonies, ugh, so pretty. And then I have one more bouquet to sell to hopefully somebody tomorrow. So that is something else that I did because all of this is still here. Like I said, I extended the sale, but what I think is really cool about having this sale and actually this is the, this is my second sale that I've ever hosted. The first one I hosted was just me getting rid of crap, but y'all, this isn't crap. This is good stuff. And I've already shown you a sneak peek of a lot of this. This is good stuff. Okay, so what I have learned from now having the sale inside my warehouse is that I think I should do this at least quarterly because I did so well. And it will allow me to continue to hunt for pieces specifically for the sale and also for the collection but also it will help me move some inventory that might not be renting to make way for newer inventory that potentially can do well for me for the Sugar Creek event rental side of things. So I'm really pumped that I did so well in this warehouse sale. I advertised through Instagram, so I did a, an ad on my Instagram story and then I did an ad on my actual Instagram post. Then I shared it through a Facebook marketplace into several Facebook marketplace locations. So I also bought a listing through estatesales.net. Now, my best clients came from Sugar Creek. Those were the best shoppers, hands down. And so I think next time, even though I did list locally, I didn't get good humans. I got a lot of people looking for cheap and the people that broke the coffee pot were not coming from my Instagram. They were coming from either the Facebook marketplace listing or through the estate sales.net listing. I'm not sure which one they came from. So it tells me that I just need to focus my efforts into marketing through Instagram because that's where I made the money. Now, one person saw it on Facebook Marketplace in one of the listings somewhere and they bought two chairs, two wicker chairs, and I made money from that. So I don't want to fully discount 
Facebook Marketplace, but they were the only ones. Out of the people that showed up, they were the only ones. And I also surprisingly had a competitor whom I had never heard of, but they came in in their logoed shirts and were in my space, not really shopping per se. Thankfully they didn't take pictures, but they were scoping me out. They were scoping out my collection, scoping out what I had for sale, scoping out my prices of what I had for sale. And I was like, that's really bold to come in into my warehouse with your logoed shirts on telling me what it is that you do, not introduce yourself. And yeah, so that was interesting. So lots of good stuff and really sad about that Pyrex coffee pot. Truly, truly, really sad, but I'll get over it. Maybe I'll find another one. But I'm excited about the adventures. I'm excited that Kristen McCurdy was here and hung out with me. And we have already started planning some upcoming shopping trips to New Orleans and to France when we can go to France and to Connecticut to go to Brimfield. I've always wanted to go to Brimfield shopping. So this was good. This was good and I'm excited to do another one. So this is June, August, September, October. October is out of the question. Probably a sale in November. I think November starts slowing down for me if I do these quarterly. June, July, August, September. I could do September. We could do it right on the quarter start. No. Anyways, I'll get it figured out. I would like to do it on the quarter start, but quarter four starts October, and that's just a, just a crazy busy wedding month. So I don't think that's effective. But September might work. Might aim for September. So July, August, September. That's not too bad. I think I'll do that. September. September! September. So if you are local to me or you want to mark your calendar, mark down September that Sugar Creek is having another sale in their warehouse. I don't know if I'm going to call it my warehouse sale because that really confused some people. They were like, are you going out of business? And I'm like, uh, no, no, no. I am just trying to move some things that don't rent, but also sell some things that were part of the collective that I started during quarantine and try to do that on Instagram, Sugar Creek Collective. And it just, that takes a whole lot of time. And I'd rather build up and sell in a weekend and be in my own space and not have to constantly coordinate with people buying things and shipping things. So I hope that you will attend if you are in my market anywhere close by. I hope that you'll mark September. I need to look at my calendar and I'm still booking for September so I have to be really careful on what that might look like. So, so maybe September is not a good idea. Anyways, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. So if you missed last week's episode, I hope that you will go and actually watch it because I'm going to queue it up right here. Plus, I'm also adding a subscribe button. So that little circle that's gonna pop up right around here, once you go subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, it will alert you when brand new videos are dropping on the Sugar Creek channel. And I don't want you to miss out. So, queue up last week's video, hit that subscribe button, and I will be back next week with another episode of the House of Sugar Creek.